I will show you how you can organize your Figma files like a pro to set you up for design success. It doesn't matter if you are working on a small app feature or a big brand project, this method is scalable and it works every single time. In my design studio where we work with big name brand clients like Sony or Zynga, this method helps us to save time, stay true to my design process and stay productive. Let me show you. The first thing that I will do when creating a new Figma file is I will make sure to give it a proper file name. So I usually follow the file name, file name structure client, project and feature to make sure that I will be able to find my file just based on file name in four to five years from now. So imagine you're working on a website for Sony and maybe you're working on the team page of the website. So this file name would be Sony website team page. Okay, so something that will help you that will help your future self to actually find the file. The second step that I will always do is I will add our master component library. At Human Deluxe, we do have a master file, a master library with all the necessary components that we use when prototyping, when setting up design files quickly. We call this the Human Deluxe master file. And in my next video, I will actually show you how this is constructed and what's in it and how you can build your own master file. Think of it as the Swiss army knife for Figma with all the important things that might need you get started in it. All right, so this one I will always implement first to give me all my necessary styles, all my necessary components. And then we go to pages. We will create five pages for starters. And I will show you in an existing file what these look like. So this is 38 brand design. 38 is a weather app, some internal project that we have used to play around and try some new things. And I'm very happy to show you how to organize your Figma file based on 38. The first page that you always wanted to create is the overview page. So in overview, you have room, you have space, for of course your project thumbnail, but also some project explanation. And what I usually like to do is I will um, export all project explainer graphics, everything that I would use to present to the client or things that I would use for social media or things that I would use um, to communicate what the project is about on the overview page. Like in this example here, we do have the simple design specs that are being used to communicate the brand basics. All these live in the overview page. The goal is that when you enter your, when you enter your file for the first time or show somebody around in this file, that on the overview page, they get a very good, very clean and non-confusing overview over what the project, what, what the feature, what the brand is about and basically have a good orientation on what to expect in this file. So that's the overview page. Of course, at the very beginning, the overview page will be empty and you will fill it with life um, as you go, as you design. The next page that um, we are creating is the research page. So as I have said, this file structure follows my design process, which means um, I will actually have a linear structure going from the very start to the very end in my process, um, which is which is very, very helpful when it comes to understanding how you came to your results and how you have created um, your file, how you have made your design decisions as you went along. So in research, I use sections to separate my research details. This is a space where I would put workshop results, where I would put client input, where I put ideas and things I have found. In this case, for 38, we have two different research sections. So one is about app dashboards. We wanted to see what certain um, 
apps would look like, what uh, certain dashboards would be created. We really like this nice big typography, these rounded corners in these widgets. So we definitely wanted to have this in the app and this is part of the research. And the second part is the visual research. Now 38 is a little bit of a special weather app brand because um, it is not your everyday sunshine happy weather app but it's supposed to be a weather app for the world after climate change. So we wanted to create a tool that helps people deal with the everyday effects of climate change um, that should educate people a little bit on what is happening on the effects of climate change and yeah maybe give some ideas for actionables and what you can do to combat climate change. To do that of course we wanted to have a very strong visual something that communicates climate change and things like wildfires, like the effects of climate change are a very strong visual. I personally uh, think that this one here from the Canada wildfires in New York City is a very, very strong visual. So something that we wanted to use as a basis for this app. Now, all of this here lives in the research page and you can always come back to it and can refer to it. Um, when you create your concepts, when you create your designs. Now, there is no rule on how many sections you can have and how many sections you want to have. And what I usually do is I organize my files uh, into sections after I have uh, started working on it. So I don't create like a section and then drop all the images on it, but I would rather drop all the images in and then afterwards create sections to order and organize my files. This I found is a little bit easier than working in sections straight away. The next section or sorry, the next page actually is the concept page. So on concept, we have room for um, any kind of creative ideas, any kind of creative input. This is the place where you can experiment a little bit, where you can add sketches, where you can play around with interface elements, things like this. What I would usually recommend for the concept page and but this is by no means a perfect file, but this is more a realistic file. What I would usually recommend for the concept page is to not work in color. So try to stick to a black and white process, try to create uh, logos, image ideas, visual ideas, icon, icon ideas, stuff like that in black and white. Um, but of course, if you need to elaborate, and in our case for 38 color was a very important element, um, you can of course do so. Now, the importance of the concept page is that here we have a playground for all the different graphic assets, for all the different ideas that you want to explore without going into a proper design. So here we do have different ideas for interface elements that of course should be a part of this branding. But we also do have some space for a conceptual artwork like this one here, um, the Swiss Army knife for global warming as an idea for a claim for 38. So this is something that you can do that you can explore here on the concepts page. Now, moving on to the design page. On the design page, I would actually work out the final design of my brand, of my project. So in this case here uh, of 38, um, I would have final screen designs that live on the design page, whereas wireframes would rather be on the concept page. Um, and of course, I would then also do the fine-tuned vectors for logos, for interface elements, stuff like that. So in this case, we have had a little bit of a logo exploration here uh, taken from the concept page and turned into an actual logo definition on the design page. And yeah, here we will go about and define rules for the logo design. Um, we will have this overview, which I, which you have seen from the overview page where we put a copy. So all of these things will be developed here on the design page. 
Now you can have not only one but multiple design pages if needed. So for example, if you would um, iterate on a design, if you would uh, like create a new version of a logo um, that is completely disconnected from this one, you can easily just go about and create a new design page and give it a version like version two or what I usually like to do is I would just give it today's name, uh, sorry, today's date and then have um, a visible iteration of my design. The cool thing about this one is that I can see that I can visually track how many iterations my design has went through, which helps me when communicating with the client on about how much work has been going into the project and also how the states were at the time when we created them. Very important is that you never delete any ideas, that you never delete any content in Figma. You have basically endless space. It's very hard to run out of memory in Figma because, well, it's, it's a very um, yeah, open space for your ideas. So you can just create as many of these pages as you wish and uh, this would help you to track down your design process, track down your design work as you have done it. The same of course goes for the concept page. So if you are not happy with the first iteration of your concept, you can always create a second iteration, third iteration and so on. Now moving on to the last step, to the last page of my Figma file structure. This is the assets page. Now in theory we do have the development mode which helps to um, dissect a screen design or to identify certain things like colors etc etc straight from the actual screen design but in reality sometimes we need an asset that is bigger. For example you have a header image of a website that needs to extend out of screen which is not reflected in the design yet. So here the asset page comes in handy. For the asset page we want to have all the exportable assets like in this case our app icon uh, ready to be exported in the format that we want to and of course we can preset these assets for export here on the assets page. So this is the very simple Figma file structure that helped me to organize my files and stay true to my design process. Um, I hope that these work for you, that you like this and maybe you want to try this yourself. In my next video I will walk you through my Figma master file, the file that you've seen integrated in this video. I will show you what's in it and how you can build your own. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you won't miss the next video and I will see you next week. Until then, bye!